So this morning, my intention or my goal is first to present to you the role of Adventist teachers, pastors, and students in Adventist education. Why I am sharing this important uh, uh, presentation? Because I want you to be aware of your role, you know, when you will become pastors, when you, be, you will become teachers um, in Adventist education. So, after this presentation, I will be again presenting in the area of creationism. And there, we will be able to find a lot of uh, distorting issues. Of course, I don't have much, uh, I don't have luxury of time really to go into the details of this. But we will try to capture the most important issues so that uh, we will be able to cover uh, the, the content of uh, this program. So, role of Adventist teachers, pastors, students in Adventist education. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer before we start. Loving Heavenly Father, this morning we humbly come before the throne of grace. Loving Father, we pray that you will be with us, kindly open our minds, our hearts, and even guide us in the way we perceive things, that somehow the issues that we are going to consider, especially the uh, Adventist perspective that we have on these issues, will somehow help us in our learning, and this will guide us in the way we do things, make decisions, and even in our behavior. Thank you, Lord, for the assurance that you will be with us today. We pray in the loving name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. You know, young people, when you learn, when you start learning something, or if you were a teacher, when you start teaching, there are three important questions that you need to ask. The first question probably is, what is real? What is real? And then another question is, what is true? So we're talking about truth. And then the third is, the third question is, is this valuable? In other words, in these things that in these things that I'm going to learn, what is a value? So if you are really a mature uh, individual, these are the basic questions that you are going to ask. What is real in life? What is truth? Or what is true? What is a value? And when we talk about what is real, there is a part in philosophy, we call it metaphysics. Okay? And then when we are talking about truth, then there is a component in philosophy which we call epistemology. And then when we talk about values, we are talking axiology, and axiology, of course, there are two aspects that you have to consider, ethics, and ethics considered what is right and wrong, and then aesthetics, what is beautiful, what is admirable. So those are important questions that we have to ask. And of course, today, we have philosophical positions. There is what we call ontology. Those of you who goes into philosophy. Ontology is referring to nature of reality. What is the nature of reality? 
And then there is another one, epistemology. We are talking about what is the nature of truth. And then axiology, what is the nature of value. And of course, there are three uh, perspectives. The other world, referring to heaven. And then the earth-centered, referring to this world. And then man-centered, referring to us, person. So when we talk about uh, ontology, nature of reality, when we are Christians, of course we are all Christians here, I presume that we are all Christians, or Hindu, or Jewish, no, no, not Hindu, but Jews probably, Jewish. If you belong to that school, representative school, then the nature of reality is reality is founded in the supernatural. So it's coming from God. Okay? So when we ask about reality, it's coming from God. It's not coming from us. It's, coming, it's not coming from the world. But the source of reality is God. But if your school is only uh, up to this world, up to this earth, then your understanding of reality is reality is just here in this world. So if you are a Christian, particularly Adventist, reality is in God. A supernatural being. If you are a man-centered, in other words, you don't believe God, reality to you is in your own experience. What you experience, what reality is me. I am reality. That is an area of ontology. Epistemology, nature of truth, if you are a Christian, then truth is received through divine revelation, maybe through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit revealed it, reveals it to us. That's why we read the scripture, because the scripture is a divine inspired word of God. So we say, what is the nature of truth? Of course, from the word of God, Revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. But if our focus is just on this earth, then truth is discovered through the senses and reason. You don't have to go to the Bible, but you have to use logic, you have to use reason, and even your senses in such a way that you will be able to find truth or to arrive at truth. But if you are a man-centered, truth actually is constructed from human experience. You say, well, I will be able to come up with the truth based on my experience. So what you are going to do? You have to expose yourself to these different experiences in such a way that you will be able to develop or arrive truth or discover truth. Axiology, nature of values. Values, of course, in, for the Christian, is found in God or the ideal. So it's here. Uh, values is not from the world. It's not what people say. It's not what you invent. It's not what you decide. But it is what the scripture says. Okay, that is axiology. And young people, there are six great philosophies in the world today. Because there are other, you know, and other philosophies maybe are uh, ramifications from these great philosophies. You have idealism, 
When we talk about idealism, we're talking about the mind. When we talk about realism, we're talking about nature. And then when we talk about scholasticism, we are talking about logic, pragmatism, we are talking about experience. You know what is pragmatism? Pragmatism is, if that works, that's okay. And then existentialism, we are talking about self. And then Christianity, of course, for us, we are talking about God. Okay, we are talking about God. So, six great philosophies. So we have to be very careful which of these philosophies are influencing us. What kind of philosophy we hold on. So again, idealism, the mind, realism, nature, scholasticism, logic, pragmatism, experience, existentialism, self, and then Christianity, God. You know, worldview is very important. Why it is important? Because the beliefs that you have will influence your mind, your feeling, and even your behavior. So when we talk about worldview, they are what we call fundamental beliefs. These are frame of reference in which we are able to interpret the world. That's worldview. They are conceptual framework. They are fundamental convictions or they are controlled beliefs. You know what happens? First, it started with a belief. Then it becomes a conviction. And then once it becomes a conviction, it becomes a philosophy. And then when it becomes a philosophy, that will be the basis of your practice. So here, you will see the relationship of worldview to philosophy and education. In worldview, you have conceptual framework, fundamental convictions, and then control, control beliefs. That's how we define worldview. Okay? Now, when in philosophy, we have discussed that metaphysics and ontology, epistemology, axiology, okay? and then you have ethics and aesthetics. That's under value. So, your worldview will determine your philosophy. And your philosophy determines your educational practice. That's why in, in the school, you have mission and objectives of the school. You know, the school would always uh, post that in a strategic, strategic places. Mission and objectives. And then from those mission and objectives, you choose administrators. And then you establish facilities in line with the mission and objectives. And then you also hire teachers. And then you accept students based on the programs that you have. And then you have also the curriculum of the school. So, what I'm saying here is, if your worldview is Christian, of course your philosophy is Christian. And then when your philosophy is Christian, your educational practice is also Christian. And then if your uh, educational philosophy is Christian, sunod ang practice ninyo, it's also Christian. And then your mission is Christian. The administrators are Christians. Okay, you, you see to it that the facilities you have will really uh, answer to the needs of the students. Teachers are Christians. And then your goal for your students is for them to be what? To be Christian. And then curriculum also is Christian. So worldview is very important. Because from your worldview, you will develop your philosophy. And then from your philosophy, then you will have your educational practice. And based on your educational practice, 
you design the component of your curriculum and even design your own program in the school. So I will give you uh, the examples of these different philosophies. For example, idealism. You know, I, I give that as one of the philosophies, six philosophies. For example, idealism. You know, if you are reading books, you will notice that there are proponents of this um, educational philosophy. Who are these? Of course, Plato, St. Augustine, Descartes, George Berkeley, Manuel Kant, Hegel, Henry Bergson. Some of these were theologians and some were educators. So, from the writing of Plato, they came up with their educational practice. They designed their curriculum, their educational practice, the programs that they have based on the, uh, the philosophy of idealism. For example, for Plato, this lectern is not real. Okay, take note of that. This lectern is not real. For Plato, there, there is a real thing. Okay? And the real thing is not Coca-Cola. <laughs> but the, uh, the real thing is actually in the mind. Okay? So this lectern is just a copy of something that is real. So this is just a copy. This is not the real thing. So reality is situated in the mind. That's why you call that idea. Truth is perceived in the realm of ideas. Okay? Truth is not here. But it is in your mind, according to Plato. The values is found in the other ideal other world. In other words, it's up there. And then the student, of course, that philosophy affects the way they look at students. Because here, in idealism, a student is considered as an intellect. Okay? You are considered as intellect. So the focus of the teacher is on the mind. Other aspects, no. The social, the emotional, the moral, no. They don't consider that. Their consideration is only the mind. The pouring of information to the mind. So the role of the teacher here is the teacher is a dispenser of knowledge. Ang goal sa teacher, nga ang estudyante mahibalo, okay, on sa intellectual quest sa, sa estudyante, the role of the teacher is to pour knowledge into the mind of the student. So, why pakialam sa social? Why pakialam sa other things? It's only the intellect for the satisfaction of the intellect. So the curriculum, of course, gikiter, nganto sa ilang philosophy. What is this? Humanities, history, literature. It's more on the mind, feeding the mind. And then, characterized by the library, lectures, textbooks, and symbols. And of course, the very purpose, the main purpose, is to pass on the cultural heritage. So that is in... Idealism. The philosophy of idealism. Now, if you go into realism, it's an opposite of idealism. Okay, the proponents, Aristotle, you know, Aristotle was the student of Plato. Reality, according to Aristotle, is not in the mind, but rather it is in the world of the concrete. So what you can observe by your senses, 
Kanang imong makita, imong mahikap, mo na real thing. So kay ang Coca-Cola mahikap ug mainom, that's the real thing. Okay? Pero ang idealism no, it's just a copy. Okay? It's just a copy. The real thing is up there in the mind, it's somewhere there. So, reality is located in the world of the concrete. The truth is perceived through observation. So, what you can observe sa imong five senses, okay? Sa imong makita, mahikap, that is the real thing. Okay? That is the truth. And the values, of course, is found in the natural order. It's not in the Bible, it's not in the mind, but rather, it's in the natural order. So, how do you understand the student? The student is understood as the functioning organism. The teacher, of course, considering the, the way of learning, has to consider the what? Demonstration. Because, of course, the teacher should be observed. The teacher should model. So, teacher here is a demonstrator. And then, the emphasis is more on sensory experience. And then, characterized by laboratory. So, ang learning, kinahang lang ka sa laboratory. Field trips, pictures, and other manipulative activities. Of course, the purpose of this, young people, teachers, is to preserve and expand the fund of knowledge. So, again, I have discussed with you already two uh, philosophies subscribed by the educators. Idealism and realism. I don't have time really to discuss all of this. You have neo-scholasticism. You have pragmatism. Okay? Reality is encountered operationally in the human experience. Truth is perceived to be all that which work and then values is found in society. So what the society defines as uh, an acceptable practice, that's it. You don't have to go to the Bible. Okay? That is the pragmatic way of determining values. But for us Christians, we don't do that. Okay? We don't do that. We always go to the scripture as the basis of uh, determining values. Okay, existentialism. I don't, I, I will not discuss that anymore. So, what I'm seeing here, why I have presented this? Because when we look back to the time of Noah, you know, during the time of Noah, there were also a lot of philosophies. And our time today is the same with the time of Noah. Okay? This is what Ellen G. White said. In Noah's day, philosophers declared that it was impossible for the world to be destroyed by water. So now, there are men of science who endeavor to show the world cannot be destroyed by fire, that this would be inconsistent with the laws of nature. So they had that kind of philosophy. Okay? Reason, science, philosophy, assure them, okay, Noah was a fanatic. See, because of their different philosophies, because of their different worldview, then they started saying, oh, Noah is a fanatic. What else? True or false philosophy. Satan had widespread influence over many minds that are loyal to God's commandments in sentiment but not in practice. So we have to be very careful. Yes, we are in an academic institution and as we are exposed to this um, reading materials, theories, philosophies, principles, and so on, it's sometimes difficult for us to, to screen which is really real truth and a value. And then another statement from Ellen G. White. Satan has gained profound knowledge of human nature and can be logical, philosophical, or hypocritically religious. 
This is how Satan works, especially in an institution. Another statement from Ellen Joy. Many wander in the mazes of philosophy in search of reasons and evidence which they will never find, while they reject the evidence which God has been pleased to give. Men, referring to the last days, will give themselves up to follow every imagination of their corrupt hearts and carry out their deceptive philosophy and rebel against the authority of high heaven. So that's the reason why I have presented to you all these philosophies. Because if you are not careful, if we are not aware of this, then, you know, Satan can gain entrance into our mind. Another one. True tradition, true false education. Of course, kung sayop ang imong worldview, kung sayop ang imong philosophy, Sayopod ang imong educational practice. Okay? So, kung sayop ang imong educational practice, false education ka na. The, these men are exalted as the world's educators. I tell you, na mga tao karon nga, um, they're really intelligent. You know, one time, I was flying from Singapore to Manado. I was privileged to, to be seated to an American. I tell you, he was reading a lot of books. And you know, I was so excited to talk to him. So I tried to, you know, to uh, be in touch with him. And finally, I was able to connect to him. I said, sir, you must be a teacher. And you know what was his answer? He said, young man, more than a teacher. He answered me in an arrogant manner. I said, sir, you must be a lawyer. He said, young man, more than a lawyer. Oh, I said, wow. And he said, sir, you must be a scientist. Young man, more than a scientist. I said, sir, you must have a, a degree in philosophy. And then he laughed and said, yes, young man, to tell you, I have seven PhDs. Seven. So I started, I started looking at him and said, Maugyud ay niyong na ay pito ka PhD kay the way I see him mura naman siya o dili tao as if he is no longer a human being. Ano man? Kay taas kayong buhok o niya ang pagbutonis niya sa iyang uh, sinina wa magkadimao ang isa taas ang usa mubo and then he was smelly. Siguro ito nakakaligo so, but he has seven PhDs. And he was telling me, you know, I don't accept uh, Christianity. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in church. This is my philosophy. But very sharp person. So yes, according to Mrs. Ellen Joy, through tradition, through false education, these men are exalted as the world's educators. But in going to them, students are in danger of accepting the vial with the precious for superstition, specious reasoning, and error are mingled with portions of true philosophy and instruction. So we have to be very careful. And uh, of course, even as teachers, we have to be very careful. And even as students, we have to be very careful of what we are uh, absorbing in our minds. So, this is the counsel of Ellen Jawai. Study not the philosophy of man's conjectures. I give you those uh, six uh, wrong, distorting philosophies. 
issues in educational philosophy. Study not the philosophy of man's conjectures, but study the philosophy of him who is truth. And that word him is no other than Jesus Christ. And then another statement. The Lord's philosophy is the rule of Christian life. Again, the Lord's philosophy. In other words, the things that are coming from the scripture is the rule of Christian life. And then another statement. From Christ, so it becomes clearer now. From Christ, all truth radiates. Apart from Christ, in Christ, apart from Christ, science is misleading. Again, and philosophy is foolishness. So, katong unum, kun walay ginoo dito, they are what? They are misleading. They are foolishness. Another statement from Ellen G. White. All who become members of the heavenly family will have a philosophy and faith that is founded on the true faith in Jesus Christ. Again, Jesus Christ. And again, another statement. This is the highest science. So, kung nangita mo o taas nga sinsya, kini, Jesus Christ. This is the highest science that we can learn. The science of salvation. The cross of Calvary, rightly regarded, is true philosophy, pure and undefiled religion. Moral philosophy, the study of the scriptures, and physical training. Kanang naa inyong gihimo karon diri, kanang gitudlo sa inyo, nining CPEC, should be combined with the studies usually pursued in schools. As an educating power, the Bible is of more value than the writings of philosophers of all ages. So you're right. Your, your decision in coming here is really right. God's Word, according to Mrs. Ellen G. White, is true philosophy and the true science. What a beautiful statement from Ellen G. White. So this morning we are being warned. Yes, we have all these philosophies and I would like to tell you young people that if you go to other colleges, you will encounter all of them. In fact, the way they teach, the way they design their curriculum is based on those six educational philosophies. But we are happy that you are here because you are what? You are being introduced to the genuine Christian philosophy. So thank you very much in coming and be educated in our school. So, what is the school? I was saying, I'm going to go to the dito. What is the school? Especially Adventist school. The importance of the school. This is what Ellen G. White said. Of all institutions, remember that, of all institutions in our world, the school is the most important. Wow. You know, when I was still the vice president for NDR IEL, I always emphasize, you know, this department is very important. But now, I started um, studying the spirit of prophecy. And here is a very important quotation from Ellen G. White. It says, of all institutions, it may be hospital, maybe ADRA, or other departments, other ministries, of all institutions in our world, the school is the most important. In fact, if you are going to uh, study the book of education, one of the institutions that was established by God at the beginning was the Eden School, the Garden of Eden, the Eden School. Another statement. 
It says in fundamental of education, in a special sense or in a special manner, our schools are a spectacular or a spectacle unto angels and to men. Nga ito ning Bisaya on, okay, sa pinasahi gayod nga paagi. Okay? Sa pinasahi gayod nga paagi. Ang atong mga eskulahan, referring to the Adventist schools, sila mga talanaon ngadto sa mga manulunda o ngadto sa mga tao. Wow. So, angels are looking at you. Angels are looking at Central Philippine Adventist College. People are looking at Central Philippine Adventist College. Uh, last Sabbath, I was in Kalbayog uh, for three days. We had our summer educators convention. And then the timing, uh, ang iskulahan gi bisita sa Department of Education. Mga directors na nga ito evaluate Uy, may nakita man sa mga directors ng atong eskulahan wala makakumplay sa requirement from the very beginning of the establishment of the church school. Okay? Wa kakumplay ang atong eskulahan. And then, the director said, and we were there. The president of the mission was there. I was there. Okay, being the educational director, education director of BCSD, uh, the education director of CPUC, Pastor uh, Mr. Bandai was also there. The education superintendent of Sabar Adventist Mission, uh, Sister Casio, and my associate education director. Sa harap harapan yun, mingon ang director. Kataas sa akong panglantaw ninyo. You are unique kind of people. Wala yung kumagdahong nga ang iskulahan di ay mauni ang sitwasyon. Nausab ang akong panglantaw kaninyo. Why? Because that director, kaya ang iyang pariente pastor, Ang iyong panglantaw sa atong iskulahan is really up there. Really following the government rules and regulations. We comply kung ano man ang kinahanglanon. But here, we are considered as non-compliant to the requirement of the Department of Education. And he said, she said, immediately next week, I can declare nga isira ang eskulahan. Because you have a serious issues nga wala ninyo makumply sa, uh, sa Department of Education. So we tried to appeal, appeal ma'am, you know, this is not uh, intentional na kuan lang namo ni, wala na lang namo ni makita. And sa sige na mo negotiate siguro mga two hours, finally, she said, okay, I'll give you up to the end of this year, kung dili makumplay ni, we will be forced to close the school. Why? Because people have what? High expectations on us. Angels are watching at us. Ang mga tao sa kalibutan, they're watching on us. Okay? They have high regards on us. Why? Because we are, according to the spirit of prophecy, we are messengers of hope. We are peculiar people. Okay? We are peculiar people. So, again, another quotation from Ellen G. White. The school is the Lord's property. I tell you, it's not your property. It's not the property of uh, the president, Dr. Salazar. It's not the property of uh, Pastor Mergal. No. The school is the Lord's property. And the grounds of it are His farm. Iyan ni uma. Iyan ni farm. Why? Because 
Kamu ang produkto ni ini. You are the product of the school. And when I say product, I'm, I mean someday you will be in heaven because of what you have learned here. And God is glorified kung may mga estudyante nga din madala dito sa gingharian sa mga langit. That's why the school is his farm. You are being what? You are being mentored. You are nurtured. You are trained. Ang inyong uh, uh, gitawag na ito nga character, philosophy, nga iya sa kalibutan, it's being what? It's being formed, transformed, renewed, until finally, ma-restore ka mo. Okay, your character will be restored into the image of Christ. Amen? That's why this is God's farm. Huh? Farm ni sa ginoo. Ni amo din he. Mga tanong mo sa ginoo. So don't, hindi mo magpasaway. <laughs> okay, hindi uh, mo magpasaway. Why? The school is the Lord's property and the grounds about it are His farm. Okay. Again, another statement. When properly conducted, our schools will be the means of lifting the standard of truth in the places where they are established. I tell you. Kung maayo lang kuno pagka-manage ang atong mga eskwelahan, kanang eskwelahan, mahimong standardis sa kamatuoran, nga diin siya gitanom. So people from Alegria, people from Murcia, will see the standard of truth. This will be the beacon of light to the world. Wow. When properly conducted. But if not properly conducted, it will become what? It will become a curse to the society. Okay? Our schools are ordained by God to prepare the children for this great work. This school, Central Philippine Adventist College, is ordained by God. Remember that. So, ayaw in town mo pagyaga-yaga sa eskulahan. Because the school is God's ordained institution. Okay, used instrument in preparing people in God's kingdom. Okay? And then, who is the president of the school? Of course, physically, Dr. was this? Anida. Okay? Physically appointed. But here is an assurance. So teachers, administrators, consider this statement. One point that should never be forgotten by our workers is that the Lord Jesus Christ is our chief director. Wow. He is the chief director. So, what ay ang ay kabalakan, Dr. Nida? Because the chief director of the school is Jesus Christ. May mga challenges man, may mga problema sa school, but we don't have to worry. Why? Because the chief administrator, spiritual chief administrator, director, is Jesus Christ. And the chief administrator is guiding guiding the physical administrators of the school. Do you believe that? Amen. That's according to Testimonies, Volume 9, page 75. And you know, young people, the goal of education in this school, okay, in this school, is to prepare the student for the joy of service in this world and for the higher joy of world, a wider service in the world to come. Dual. Preparation sa joy of service in this world and in the world to come. Muskuy mo sa public. They are preparing you for the joy of service in this world only. Wala na ibiyan. Pero sa Adventist Educational Institution, the school is preparing you for the joy of service in this world and the joy of service in the world to come. Amen? Oh, wow. So, take note of that. And then, what else? 
the highest ideal of education, young people, is not only to become nurses, licensed nurses, not only to become licensed teachers, not only to, only to become PhD degree holders, but according to the spirit of prophecy, higher than the highest human thought can reach is God's ideal for His children. Godliness, Godlikeness is the goal to be rich. Wow. Not only to become professional, not only to become teacher, not only to become lawyer, not only to become pastor, but the goal of education is for you to become godlike. Okay? For you to become godly, to become godlike. And that's more than a lawyer. That's more than a teacher. That's more than a PhD degree holder. That's according to Mrs. Ellen Jawai. And the very purpose of that school is to bring man back in harmony with God. Aron nga dad unta, pabalik unta, ngadto sa ginoo. Kay nawala ta sa ginoo. So, restoration of the lost image of God in man. Okay. And then, elevate and ennoble his moral nature that he may again reflect the image of the Creator is the great purpose of all the education and discipline of life. That is, counsel to parents, teachers, and students. So, when we talk about Adventist education, Young people, it is more on character development. It's character building. Mrs. Ellen G. White says, the great work of life is character building and a knowledge of God is the foundation of all true education. Again, take note of that. Great work of life, character building. Okay? Foundation of all true education, knowledge about God. And you can find it here in this institution. You can find that in our schools. And young people, I would like to tell you that Adventist education follows the principle of the Bible. For example, look into Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9. Okay? This is now the Adver Adventist perspective. Okay? So, Deuteronomy 6, 4, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So, in education, the focus of teaching is to know God. That's why the foundation of all true knowledge is the knowledge about God. Why? Because in Deuteronomy 6, 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So it means that the focus of teaching is to know God. Kung naamay nagatudlo, nagawas sa pagtudlo sa kinaya sa Diyos, dili ka na siya sa ka-Christian teacher. Because the Bible is very clear, that the focus of teaching is the student will be able to hear the Lord, will be able to know the Lord. Why? Because when you know the Lord completely, if you know Him completely, the result is you will be able to love Him more dearly. Young people, the reason why you cannot love God so dearly it's because you don't know Him more fully. But if you know Him more fully, the result, if you, you will be able to love Him more dearly. And if you love Him more dearly, the result is you will obey Him willingly. The reason why you don't obey God willingly is because you don't love Him. And the reason why you don't love Him it's because you don't know Him more fully. But if you know Him more fully, 
you will love him more dearly and if you love him more dearly then you will obey him more willingly amen that's why the bible is very clear that the purpose of teaching is for us to know god above and foremost to know god okay next it says you shall love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your might that is in Deuteronomy 6 5 so it gives us an idea that in a school the atmosphere of instruction is love rather than fear okay Kuna my teacher ngang iyang atmosphere of teaching is by fear he is not following the footsteps of uh, Bible education. So, when we teach, it must be in the atmosphere of started in the academy, you started in church school. But for me, I did not have that kind of privilege. I was able to earn my education in... Uh, in the college only. I did not have the privilege to attend elementary school in our church schools, high school, academy, no. It was only in college. So, when I was exposed in the public school, the method of teaching was more on fear. Okay? So, if you don't do this, okay, one strike. My stick ang among teacher. One strike. So it's by fear. So we obey, we learn by fear. But you know, in uh, Christian education, the motivation of education is love rather than fear. What else? Verse 6. This which I have commanded you today shall be in your heart. So it means that the source of instruction, the source of instruction is the written word, nature, illustrated word, and then the living word, no other than Jesus Christ. So the source of information is the word of God rather than gadgets. Yeah, what a beautiful uh, instruction. And then, verse 7, you shall teach them diligently. In other words, the process is diligence, excellence, receptive, and active. And then, of course, the curricular dimensions is in verse 8 to 9. Verses 8 to 9. You shall bind them a sign of your hand, and they shall be on your frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the drop doorpost of your house and on your gates. So here, you will notice that the fourfold aspects of man is being considered. Okay? Writing upon the doorpost, referring to our spiritual aspect. Talking about the frontlets between your eyes. Okay, here, referring to the intellectual aspect. Sign upon the hand, here. When we talk about the hand, it's more on work, so it's physical. And then writing upon the gates. It's uh, our visitors, we meet them on the gates, so it refers to the social aspect. So you can find those aspects of training here in this institution. The spiritual, the intellectual, the physical, as well as the social. So, my dear students, you are really fortunate to be in this institution. Well, that model in the Garden of Eden in the beginning was reinforced by Jesus. Jesus reinforced that model. In fact, the model of Jesus was education for eternity. Mark 3.14 he appointed 12. 
okay? His students, the 12 students, the 12 disciples, whom he also named apostles, so that they might be with him and he might send them out to preach. You know, there are four aspects that we have to consider here. First, he called them. You know, my dear students, I do not believe that your coming is by accident. Ano niyo, sa'yo mo ingon tayo, ah, sulag mo arman tong akong pagka-enroll dito sa CPEC. No. Whatever it may be, the point is, the Lord has called you and has chosen you to be a student of Central Philippine Adventist College. Amen? He has called you because the Lord has a purpose in your life. The reason why you are here, because the Lord has a purpose in your life. He called you. And that's the experience of the disciples. He called. So, it's by grace. Sayang kalooy, sayang gracia, kita gitawag sa Dios. Okay. So, we are called, and therefore, we are chosen. And then, the Lord wants us to grow in grace. And the text says, so that they might be with Him. Wow. So God called you, God chose you with the purpose that you will be related to Him. So God wants you to what? That by His grace, you will grow. You will grow in grace. Oh, spirituality. Your vertical relationship with God. Okay? But God doesn't end there. Because it says that they might be sent this is the empowering of His grace. Now, after we are being related to God, now what happens? We are empowered by His grace so that we will do mission. We will do witnessing. And then we have to demonstrate it. Demonstrate through His grace by preaching and also teaching. So that's the plan of Jesus to His disciples. So, Jesus worked individually for the salvation of the disciples. For their formation, okay? For their transformation, renewal, and then for their trans transformation, restoration of the lost image of God. And young people, Jesus was able to turn the world upside down through his 12 disciples. And here are ways on how Jesus did that. How his students became transformers, world transformers. Okay? He chose and ordained them, appointed the community to be with him. He loved and cared for them. Teachers, do we love and care our students? Very important method. He wanted them to experience the kingdom by being part of his life and mission. He also engaged them in service so that he could send them to share the good news of the kingdom with others. He brought them into community and empowered them for mission. These are strategies of Jesus on how he was able to want to educate his students. What atmosphere? Here are the atmosphere. Tenderness, Sympathy, unity, and love are to be cherished. There should be unselfish, devoted, faithful teachers, teachers who are constrained by the love of God and who with hearts full of tenderness will have a care for the health and happiness of the students. So my dear teachers, if you are here, this is the kind of atmosphere. This is what we call disciple-based education. This is your role as a teacher. Okay? Atmosphere of discipleship based education. And then, the model, our schools must be more like the schools of the prophets. And then, and I underline that word, it must be a family school where there is love, there is belongingness. Wonderful. Okay? They should be a family schools where every student will receive special help from his teachers as the members of the family should receive help in the home. This is 
the kind of atmosphere that we need to have in the school. And then, Jesus Christ is the anchor of all the programs, all the teachings that we have. Okay? It is the anchor. Jesus Christ is the anchor of all educational process. I like this. This is uh, a counsel to the students as well as to the teachers. Teachers should be committed to teach the science of salvation. What is the science of salvation? Christ crucified. Christ risen. Christ ascended into the heavens. Christ coming again. Okay? Kunaman tayo tudlo ng mga principles that should revolve around the science of salvation that Christ came into this world. He lived a victorious life and then He died at the cross to restore us and then He was resurrected and then He ascended on high and now He is in the heavenly sanctuary doing the ministry for us and then he is coming back. He is coming back to take us home. When we teach, when we preach, ang atong kamatuuran information ng atong hihatag should be based on those science of salvation. That's why Mrs. Ellen G. White says, Let the cross, let the cross of Christ be made the science of all education. Wow! The cross be made the science of all education. And then she added, the center of all teaching and all study. Amen? The center. The center of all teaching and all study. Revolve from the science of salvation. Okay. So, we in the Southern Asia Pacific Division, we came up with a model hoping that we will be able to collaborate with the General Conference in what we call Education for Eternity. So, we have here SSD, Southern Asia Pacific Division. Muna atong code kay kon moingon ta is ED na na may is ED. Okay, so naghimo tag ato SSD. Okay. So SSD. SSD is yes, there is that geographical uh, location. It's in Silang. But you know, I want this to be educational in focus. Missional in focus. Sa so, diha nga nagtrabaho pa ko as Vice President of NDRIAL, I conceptualize SSD and even popularize it. And the GC was very happy about that. You know, in the NDRIAL, SSD means seeking, saving, discipling. Where did I get that? Of course, from Luke 19. Chapter 19, verse 10. And then Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Okay? Jesus came to seek, save, and disciple. S, S, D. Now that uh, they assigned me as education director of SSD, again, I do not want to detach myself from that SSD. So, SSD. SSD is, means first, seeking and learning truth. And that is what we call scholarship. The mind. Having the mind of Jesus. Philippians 2.5 Let this mind be new, which is also in Christ Jesus. And then Romans 12, the renewing of your mind. That is what we call scholarship. Seeking and learning truth. We need to understand who God is, as I have mentioned. And then another one is, of course, when we know the truth and then absorb the truth, then we will be able to make decisions for the truth 
And then when we make decisions for the truth, we will be able to make actions, life that is based on the truth. So saving by integrating faith, commitment, and we are talking about spirituality. Of course, literally development of character. Very important because in our study, character building should be the greatest work in an institution. Character building. So, is is the the focus is restoration. And then the end goal is redemption. Biblically, here are the goals as far as education for eternity is concerned. Okay? We want them to be saved into God's kingdom. Not only to be saved, but we want them to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 3.18 And then not only that, we want the student to grow in their commitment to God. Willingness. Nga makaabot mo ni anang kinabuhi pareho sa tulo ka mga uh, friends ni Daniel. Nga sa diha, nga they were asked, okay, they were summoned to bow before that statue. Anong response sa tulo ka mga friends ni Daniel? My dear King Nebuchadnezzar, yes! We know, we believe that the Lord will save us from that fiery furnace. But even if the Lord will not save us, we will not bow to that graven image, to that statue. So we want to have that kind of commitment. Nga bisan pa unsay may tabo sa inyong kinabuhi, you are willing to stand for the truth. Nothing but the truth. Ngadili tabo compromise. That's what we call willingness to suffer for the sake of truth. And then, you will be able to serve God. And then after serving, of course, you become disciples of Jesus Christ, multiplying. Okay? And then in Ephesians 4.12, so the focus is from the seekers. The seekers, those who don't have truth yet, from the seekers, they will become believers of Christ. And then when they become believers, we do not just let them be a member, but we want them to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Okay? Muna end goal na to. Not only to be seekers, but to become believers and then become disciples. And Ephesians 4.12 if we do this, this will help the church become perfect, do its ministry, and then edify the body of Jesus. So, that's the biblical goals of education for eternity. Is is D. Now, we have a framework. How we are going to do this, young people. This is in collaboration with our I Will Go strategic plan. So, we design in the Is is D. Nining framework. First, our mandate. Ang atong mandato. The first, the priority in our life is the transformation of character. That is spirituality. Maunay atong, unsani? Atong goal. Why? Because, according to Mrs. Ellen G. White, piety. Okay? The church members' piety is the greatest power. Ang ato ko nung espirituhanon nga kinabuhi, maoy dako nga gahom sa mayong balita. Kaya kung ang atong mga kinaiya, pariyo sa kinaiya ni Kristo, that's a power. Okay? Gahom na siya. Okay? So, transformation of character spirituality is our priority. In fact, Mrs. Ellen G. White says that spirituality is our passport to heaven. Dili mo makaadto sa langit kung wala mo spirituality. When I talk about spirituality, it's your relationship with God. You know, I've been traveling sa 14 countries. And then, of course, kinahanglanon visa, passport. One time, I was in Bali. Kita na ko ditong Announcement. 
tanan ng mga Pilipino passport holder dari mo agin ining computer di na mo kinahanglan bulinia dito sa ano ni sa immigration officer so dito ko nagagi my passport was very akarang bagugod so I started inserting my passport okay pero may abot na lang og 10 minutes wa agud mo abli ang pultahan so parang na kuha na ko na hadlock na ko my opinions dito na pero ako na lang nabilin ko there must be a problem may problema siguro ko sa akong kaugalingon and uh, ang akong mga kauban ibalik Kunya nang utana, ay Pastor Mergal, unsa na hitabo nimo? Nganong dugay ka diha? What is happening to you? I said, well, I keep on inserting my passport, the cover of my passport, pero the door doesn't open. And then Pastor Dahunan observed. He said, Pastor, ang imong passport may cover nga plastic. Kuha anang cover, ibalik pag insert dito siya machine. So, akong gitanggal ang akong plastic. Pag insert ko, immediately, ang akong, ang pultahan, hing abli, nakagawas ko. So, I learned a lesson. Nga kung muad to sa langit, walay plastikan. No plasticity in heaven. It's the reality of who you are. Ang imong spirituality. Mo'y magadala ka nimo dito sa king harian sa mga langit. That's why, Mrs. Ellen G. White is very clear. Our spirituality is our passport to heaven. Okay? So, transformation of character, that's the mandate, our priority. And then, our mission is to prepare our students for mission. Ang atong eskulahan kuno giandam sa dako ng buhat. Our school is being prepared for that great work. Mm. For you to become missionaries, to become teachers, to become pastors, to become administrators. That's the very purpose why we establish our school. Preparing students for service. The method, pamaagi, Christ method alone. And then the means, the family care classrooms. Kaya nga itong mga classrooms nga makita nato diha ang pag-amuma makita nato diha ang maayong pagtagad makita nato diha ang atmosphere sa tenderness love nga atong gimension kanina family care group or classroom and then the manner total school and home involvement okay may sa atong church nakita total member involvement Pero dahil sa eskulahan, total home and school involvement. Your parents should be involved. Okay? Total home and school involvement. And of course, the mobilizing and motivating power is no other than the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, kining atong framework, dili gayod ni mo work out. So, our schools are to be educating schools and training schools, preparing students to grasp the greatness of the work. Wow. Beautiful statement from Ellen Joanne. So what are the role and responsibilities of the teachers and pastors? First, basahon nato ang 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Why? Because in verse 17 of 2 Corinthians 5, God says, You have peace in Christ. Na kitay kalinaw diha kang ginong sos. Why we experience that peace? Because of His grace. Apostle Paul was saying, Because of His grace, now you are reconciled to God. Now you are considered the sons and daughters of God. First, uh, John 1.12 And then Ephesians 1.14 to 15 says, Now because you are children of God, you are guaranteed 
by the Holy Spirit. You are deposited by the Holy Spirit that no matter what will happen to you, you are secure in the hands of God. Not only that, according to Apostle Paul, you must have peace in mind because not only that you are sons and daughters of God, not only because you are guaranteed by God, but because you are now free from sin. Wow, beautiful. Free from sin. So we can have peace in mind. We can have peace in Jesus. And then of course, the most important is, the most, most important uh, information is, of course, according to Paul, that because you are sons and daughters of God, you are guaranteed by God, and now you are free from sin, now your names are written in the book of life. Wow, that's the most important thing. That's why Paul said, you need to have peace of mind. But you know, if you go to verse 18, Paul said, now because you are saved by grace, you are entrusted. I like that. You are entrusted with the ministry of reconciliation. Entrusted. Gitugyanan kita ni anang ministerio sa pagpasiguli. We are already restored to God. We are reconciled to God. Now, because of His grace, we have to respond to Him by saying, Lord, I want to participate in the ministry of reconciliation. And Jesus said, You are entrusted with the ministry of reconciliation. So, Mrs. Ellen G. White is very clear. Everyone who is born into the family of God is a missionary. You are a missionary. In a sense, you are entrusted with the ministry of reconciliation. And then, he doesn't stop there. Because Paul again said, yes, you are entrusted with the ministry of reconciliation, but you are also given the message of reconciliation. Wow. Entrusted with the ministry of reconciliation and then entrusted with the message of reconciliation. Your experience, okay? Your knowledge of the scripture, the spirit of prophecy, these are all messages of reconciliation. But Paul didn't end there. He again moved. He said, now you are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. You are messenger of God's reconciliation. So, what is our role? Before we become instrument of His reconciliation, God entrusted us first, empowered us with the ministry of reconciliation, and then He has given us the message of reconciliation, and then we are all messengers of God's reconciliation. So, I'm not talking to the teachers and pastors. Pastors and teachers, your responsibility is sacred. Amen? Sacred because your influence affects eternity. Do you agree with that? Your influence affects eternity. And there is a statement. His work is delicate, for it can be a means of grace or means of curse. Kung maayo ang teacher, nagsunod sa prinsipyo, sa tinuod ng prinsipyo sa edukasyon, he is a blessing to the institution, blessing to the students. Pero kung bugoy gani ang teacher, ang pastor, kung sa kano, he is a curse. That's why a Jewish proverb says, The parents bring the children into this world, but the good teacher will bring the student to the other world. Muna ay uh, Jewish proverb. Ang mga ginikanan ko no, nagdala sa ilang mga anak, ngan hinining kalibutan, pero ang maayo, godly teacher, will bring the student into heaven. 
because the impact of the teacher is always great. Okay? Nayo sa kapanahon ng akong anak, may uli gikan sa eskulahan. O niya, nagpatudlo siya sa mathematics. Ingon ko dong, mauni ang isaktong solusyon. Ah, di ko mutuo ni mo pa. Mutuo ko ni ma'am. So, ang atong mga estudyante, mas mutuo pa sa teacher kaysa mga ginikanan. That's a reality. Labi na ng mga gagmay ng mga bata. They are more inclined to believe their teachers kaysa mga parents. So, secret is the work of the teacher. His influence affects eternity. So, because God, because a teacher is God's spokesperson, we need to protect him here not to be replaced with media, workbooks, or other church programs. Kanang mga workbooks, kanang media, payo na. But this should not be a substitute to the teacher. Kailain yun ng tats. You know, when I was still an academic dean here, there was one teacher who would record his lecture sa tip recorder. O niya, muad to siya sa city, i-play ang tip recorder, may suguon siyang estudyante niya nga. Okay. Uh, paliton man ko sa city, kini ng uh, tip recorder, ipa-play ni. So, yung timing uh, uh, good for one hour ang yung lecture diha sa tip recorder. I tell you, I didn't like it. <laughs> so, ang lecture, gi-record. <laughs> Walay teacher, mamati ilang mga estudyante dito sa tip recorder. So, I decided to call the teacher and said, you know, uh, that's good, maybe once in a while, pero kung permaminti nang uh, mauna ang klase sa pagtudlo, yung ko dili kayo na epektibo. So, as God's spokesperson, we need to protect Him not to be replaced with media, workbooks, or other church program. Lahig yun ang touch sa teacher. Lahig yun ang touch sa pastor. Kaysa mamati lang ka na ginang mag-zoom lang ta, di mag-ganit ganahan. Okay? How much more kung ang teacher uh, wala diha. It's only through other means. Okay? So, that's one. And then, we have to consider the habits of the teacher, the principles. Mrs. Ellen G. White said, the habits and principles of a teacher should be considered of even greater importance than his literary qualifications. I am not saying that he can hang on ang licensure. The reason why I was called to CPEC at that time, 1989, because I was a board presser. Okay? And at that time, the CHED was requiring tatanang teachers kung mahimo na asilay teachers eligibility. And I was fortunate na my wife really forced me after finishing 18 units in education, forced me to take the uh, board teachers examination at that time. So that's the reason why I was able to come here. So yes, these uh, qualifications are important. Licensure, yes. Degree, masters, PhD. Okay? But again, it says, the habits and principle of a teacher should be considered of even greater importance than his literary qualifications. What a beautiful statement from Ellen G. White. So our model... Mrs. Ellen Joy said, our model is no other than Jesus Christ. So, what shall we do as a teacher, pastor? Si Apostol Pablo na ay gitambag siya. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. So when we teach, we need to have the mind of Jesus. So teachers and pastors, their mind and attitude in teaching and learning should be, ako, because it says here, the mind of Jesus in Philippians 2, 5, 11, He comes in the likeness of man to seek and save. In other words, the mind of Jesus was a saving mind. He humbled Himself. It means that the mind of Jesus was a humble mind. 
He served, it means that his mind was a serving mind. He obeyed, it means his mind was obedient and submissive. Then he exalted and glorified God. It means that his mind was exalting and glorifying mind. The pastors, the teachers, kung mahimo namong teachers, mahimo namong pastors, hope you will have that kind of mind of Jesus because Jesus is our model. So, what kind of mind teachers and pastors should have? The saving mind. The mind to restore and transform the lives of the students. Helping them to be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Okay? So you need to have the saving mind. Saving mind of Jesus Christ. What else? That's why this is the counsel from Ellen G. White. Eternal interest should be the great theme of teachers and students. It's not only the teachers, but also the students. Eternal interest, not only for this world, but also for the world to come. Eternal interest should be the great theme of teachers and students. The teachers need to be so sanctified through the truth. And the all-important thing should be the conversion of their students. The most important. That's why I underlined that. The most important is the conversion of the students. Developing their character like that of Jesus Christ. Okay? So the conversion of the students that they may have a new heart and life. Another one is the teacher, pastors and teachers need to have a humble mind. You know, humility is a virtue. It is a position of soul and body and life that acknowledges and embraces the goodness of God and the humanness of self. Authenticity and willingness to accept our limitations. Let us remember, teachers, yes, siguro may daghantag degree. Okay, we have been educated, we have experience. But let us remember, we still have limitations. So there are teachers who don't accept their limitations. Okay? It's very difficult. Okay? So humility is very important. One time, I was pastoring a church. And we were considering uh, to purchase uh, kanang mga kahoy para sa prant, sa uh, pasad sa iglesia. And then, gimbait na mo ang tanan mga members, church members, nga mag-submit sila sa ilang bidding. Kaya gibid na mo. And my very best friend, okay, my very best friend, dito ko maligo, dito ko mukaon, dito ko mag-ilis, before going around the church, nag-submit po siya o iyang bidding. But unfortunately, ang iyang bidding, wala giyod ma-accept. And then that friend of mine started to talk against me. So, ito si Mergal, wag yun ito'y utang kabubuton. Diri mukaon, diri maligo, diri mag-ilis. Wag yun hatagig pabor ang, akong, ang among proposal, ang among bidding. So after two months, kay 31 churches ang akong gidala sa district, after two months, ibalik ko sa iglesia. But you know, this family is no longer attending the church. They backslided for two months already. Why? Because of me. So I went to the church, and the church elder said, Pastor, kinahanglan bisitaho ni mo na si brothers and sister, a brother and sister, kuwa na gin magsimba. So, after my sermon, at about 11.45, I went to the church, and start, I, I went to their ho, uh, house, and said, started knocking at their door. Pero 20 minutes, wala gay nag-abli. Until finally, may hinay-hinay nga nagkanto sa pultahan. And then, the door uh, slowly opens. Unya nakita na ko, usaka gamay nga bata. Okay? Their daughter. And then, smiled at me and said, Hi, Pastor! And said, yeah, Hi. And then she shouted, said, Mama, Pastor is here. You know, I could hear with my ears ang response sa nanay, mingon ng nanay, Ah, pasag di rana diha, bahala na na siya. Then the door 
uh, close again. And then I started knocking, knocking. Wala mang yun. So, I decided to get inside. I pushed the door a little. Wala man masirahi sa bata. So, I moved inside, hoping nga kung makakita sila sa ako, they will invite me. Kaya dito sila na nga on. They will invite me to eat. So, one step, signaling them that uh, hoping na ma-invite ko nila. Another step, wala ko invitasyon. Another step, wala ko invitasyon. Hangtod one meter na lang ko gikan sa lamisa, wala ko invitasyon. Ako ang ma-invite sa akong kagalingon, mingon ko, sister, brother, pwede ba nga makikaon sa inyo? I tell you, immediately, ang babae mingon, ha! Kaon ka niya, o gusto ka! So, I started, kuha ako balanghoy, hinay-hinay ko, og kaon, it's really difficult to swallow, nga na kay pride, plus ang pagkaon, I tell you. Because at the time, I was saying, kinsa maning babae, Hana? Kinsa maning pamilya, ha? I'm a pastor, He should, they should respect me. So, morog mitaas na po ng akong pride. Okay? But you know, when we are a pastor, when we are a teacher, we even have to humble ourselves before our students. You know, it's not easy. Bag upa ko dire, that was 1989. I was 35 years old. So, diha nga mi join ko din sa Central Philippine Adventist College. Diha ni anang agriculture building. The first day of my class, di ako sa gawas. Pagbagting yun, gisiko ko sa estudyante. Bye. Sulod na ta. Sugod na ang atong sani, klase. Because that guy, that student, was thinking, uh, ordinaryo lang kong estudyante. Kay paparo-pariho raman na itong panahon ng among mga naong. Kay, I was still young at the time. I was younger. I tell you, it was painful. Kay gisiko ko niya. Bye. Sulod na ta. Klase. I tell you, when I started teaching, Katong Sujanti was so embarrassed that he ran out uh, pagawa sa, 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 sa classroom. First nga room dia sa agriculture. But you know, I cannot di ko maantos ng akong sudyante mo gawas. So I ran after him to the dormitory. Ask, well, if I offended you, siya gani itong nakasiko sa ako, if I offended you, I would like to ask an apology. I tell you, I could not forget that student. And one day, I met that student in in Thailand. And he was already a master's degree holder. said, Sir, thank you very much. Sa diha ang agisiko ko ikaw. Sa diha ang napaulawan ko ikaw. I was planning to stop schooling. But yun, when you followed me to the dormitory and yourself asked forgiveness, it was registered in my mind that there is a teacher who cares for me. So humility a humble mind, willingness to accept our limitations to learn and love our students regardless of their situation. Ellen G. White said, a Christian teacher reveals true humility by showing the gentleness of Christ, by being always ready to help others, by speaking kind words and performing unselfish acts which elevate and ennoble the most sacred message that has come to our world. What other minds? A submissive mind. It's the role of the teacher. Willingness and sincerity to, to submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Follow the truth and obey authorities. Another one is the exalting and glorifying mind. The teacher's work is to exalt and glorify God. Exalt the cross. Ako na uh, hatag ka ninyo. Uh, okay, so, 
teachers, pastors' mind, serving mind, saving mind, humble mind, serving mind, and a submissive mind, and a glorifying mind. So, um, Timothy, Paul advised uh, Timothy that a teacher should correctly handle the Word of God. Pastor, teacher. So what are the role of the teacher? See their teaching ministry as a sacred trust. Communicate God's Word in a timely and relevant manner to the learners. Faithful to the teaching of the Bible. The role of the teacher is he's a motivator. Teachers need to have the quality, the ability to make things happen. He should propel students to burning desire to accomplish and have sense of purpose. He must be mobilized okay, and release them from the inhibitors of learning such as doubts, debate, and incompetence. A teacher also must guide. A guide, okay, teacher must be a guide. A guide knows the way. The teacher must be infused with the Holy Spirit for illumination. As he knows the way, he also have to show the way. As a teacher, pastor, you are a resource provider. You are also evaluator. Okay, that's why you give examinations. You are also an example. You are already also a change agent. You are instrument of transformation. You are also a learner at the same time. Okay, as a pastor, as a teacher, you need to learn and learn. Okay. Christian teacher also is a person to consider that you are just a human being. You are not a superhero. You are a person. A Christian teacher should also listen. Active listening, very important. A Christian teacher should love his or students. A Christian teacher should be a friend. A Christian teacher should enable the students to help them grow. Okay? And become mature. And then a Christian teacher is a reflector. Okay? From the books, from the minds, from the thoughts that you have, this should be reflected, okay, presented to the students. A Christian teacher must be a provider. Okay, you provide. Okay. He provides resources, okay, the seating, the equipment, the physical conditions, and the kinds of learning and experiences appropriate to students' learning. A Christian teacher explores. He explores new ways of approaching life, approaching truth, and approaching the Bible. So, on and on, I have several uh, things here as far as the role of the teacher and the pastor. But the most important is, to me, as I conclude this message, is the transformation of the students. Transformation. That's the most important thing. Because what is CPEC? Yes, you have all these buildings, we have all these structures, we have all those personal resources. But what is CPEC if you gain your soul, if you lost your souls? The Bible is very clear what profit it is for a man if he gains the whole world and lost your own soul. Young people, take the most of it. This is the very place where you have to want to be educated, to be trained for the great work. And this is also a better place where you can develop your social life and even your partner in life. You know, I was a self-supporting student at Mountain View College. I worked there for almost seven years. Why? Because our, our parents could not afford. My parents could not afford. Sending me to an Adventist institution, my parents could not afford. Besides, my father was not educated. He could not even write. He could not even read. He could not read. That's why he cannot go anywhere without our help. But my ambition was, I want to
to be a worker of God. That was my prayer. That was my dream. But there was no opportunity at the time. One day, I was elected by the town to be the Sangguni Ang Bayan member. Sangguni Ang Bayan member. Wow. Sangguni Ang Bayan member. You know, when there were meetings, immediately they will address me, Honorable Bienvenido Mergal. Wow. That word, honorable. And my father really loved to hear that honorable as the worldly uh, concept. So when I planned to go to Mountain View College, my father was telling me, no, don't go to Mountain View College. You are already honorable. You are already a member of the Sangguniang Bayan. So don't go to Mountain View College anymore. I was able to support you when you were young, with no education, no formal education. So don't go to Mountain View College. But you know, I could still remember the prayer of my mother. There was a time that I got sick and the doctor could not diagnose my sickness. And I was becoming weak and weak and weak. But you know, it was about 12 o'clock in the evening that I could observe my mother praying beside me and I could hear the prayer of my mother, Lord, if you are going to heal my son, I will do my best to send him to an Adventist institution. And by God's grace, I was healed. Time for me to go to Mountain View. My father was, no, don't go. Well, if you go and then come back, and not successful, I will not consider you as my son anymore. Time to go. My mother said, you have to go. Here is my saving. 300 pesos. Be sure that you have to keep this not in your wallet, but kindly insert this in, the, in your Bible and then put that in your bag. I left from our place. I arrived in Cebu, but somehow my namariente sa ako. Mingon siya nga, oh, pariente ta. And then, of course, I trusted him. And then after 10 minutes, I said, pwede ba nga ibilin ko ang akong bag dire? Mapalit lang ko o pagkaon. I went down from the boat. Okay, kay diha man ko naghulat para ngadto sa Cagayan de Oro sa boat kay gabi iman ang travel pa kadto sa mountain uh, sa Cagayan de Oro. Just a matter of 15 minutes. Pagbalik ko ang akong 300 pesos was gone. Gikuha sa akong paryente. Okay. Uh, I tell you. I arrived Mountain View College with 25 pesos. I arrived Mountain View College with no transcript of record. No money. And then when I went to the registrar, I was suspected to be a member of fraternity because of, of my scar here. So for one month, I suffered a lot. Because sometimes I have to eat once sa Osaka Adlaw. It was difficult. So I went to the president with the help of the, was this, of the dean, dormitory dean. I presented my case and the school was very sympathetic to me. I was assigned to Swampy Valley to be a self-supporting student. By God's grace, I was able to uh, start my schooling, but in a hard way. 
At 4 o'clock in the morning, I have to report to the girls' dormitory. Kung may lalaki man nga midugay o upat katuig nga sigig lampaso, alas 4 nga to sa alas 6, dito sa girls' dormitory, ako na. I tell you, I lost my market. Kaya ang mga babae, tanaw sa ako, ordinaryo yung mga langyod nga tiglampaso dito sa girls' dormitory. To the point nga sa diha nga mag-graduate na ko, mangulitaw na ko, wala na yung masugot na ko. Kaya they look at me as just an ordinary person. Bisan kinsi akong doolon, mag-propose ko, wag yun, mayingon lang, uh, balik ka lang sa dormitory, kaligo, mawala rana. na. But I was graduating at that time. And the dormitory dean was very kind to me. Said niya, kinahanglan mangita yung ka o kapika sa kinabuhi. Din he sa Mountain View College. So I, I was saying to him, I was telling him, pero pastor, wala mang yun. Sige kong pangulitaw, wala mang yun. He said, okay, ako yung mangita. So siya yung nangita. Ingon niya, okay, ugma. Add to ka dito sa college store. At the back of the college store, na akasya dito, akasya tree, kung na mga lingkuranan, makita ni mo ang usak ka matahom, mga babae. Wow. So, that morning, I went. Okay, I dress up. Ready. And indeed, I was able to see that beautiful woman. So I started proposing. But the woman said, Sorry. Okay, I come here because I respect Pastor Bali Ramos. Not because I have a plan to talk to you. Sorry, I cannot accept your proposal. I went home very disappointed telling Pastor Bali Ramos nga wala, failure. Pero Pastor Bali Ramos said, no, 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 again, tomorrow. So, another tomorrow, I went there. I proposed with all my heart, my mind, and my soul. But again, no. The answer was no. I went to Pastor Bali Ramos. Pastor, wala good. No, 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 don't be discouraged. Next week again. <laughs> to make the long story short, seven times. But sa ikapito na, I was so insistent. Okay, I really uh, memorized my proposal. And then the lady said, why are you really insisting? I have been telling you that I don't like you. You are not my type. I don't love you. It was so painful in my heart. But you know, the Lord impressed my mind by answering here, by saying, why I am so insistent? Because the Lord is coming very soon. <laughs> and when I answered her with those words, immediately the lady looked at me and said, Okay, I will accept your proposal. <laughs> and by God's grace, that woman became my wife and the mother of my three children and four grandchildren. So I found it, I found it in our school. So this is the best place to find a partner. Okay? Again, that's one of the benefits of Christian education. So, daghan pa kong istorya, pero kay wala naman kay panahon. <laughs> Napa may sunod, lain nga topic. So, I hope young people, that you will take the best while you are here. Okay. Take the best while you are here. Train. Okay. Um, the opportunities that you have here. Learn as much. Experience as much. You will never, never regret. You will become great someday. You will become great someday. Had it not been for Christian education, probably I would not be standing this morning before you. It is by God's grace, through the instrumentality 
of Christian education that I am here this morning making some testimonies and affirmation of how great is God, how great is the Lord, and His faithfulness to His people. So thank you very much. I think we are proceeding to another uh, area.